I'm Eric Drexler, and I was drawn into the field of what's now called nanotechnology when I was a student at MIT back in the 1970s. And the center of my work has been understanding what physics tells us about technologies that don't exist today, but that could be developed in the future. One concept for how a nanofactory could be organized to have high productivity, despite the fact that the materials being handled are at the scale of, of individual molecules, would be to have a, a two-dimensional array of micron scale, actually somewhat smaller devices that are processing small molecular fragments. They would put these parts together to make larger structures. The next layer would put those together to make larger structures and so on. So you would have you know, many trillions in the first layer, progressively fewer, progressively larger products, until out the other end you would have things at the macroscopic scale. And if you just do the physics-based analysis of that, you find that the production rates can be very high, that a system that sits on your desktop could produce its own mass in sophisticated products in a matter of hours. I've spoken of putting pieces together to make larger pieces. Uh, here is something, again, like the components you see in factories. This animation was actually done by a mechanical engineer. What you saw, saw there are small blocks being put together to make larger blocks. Now, spanning the gap between the nanoscale world and the macroscale world can be remarkably direct. Uh, taking small building blocks, they can be put together in parallel by many machines working together to make larger and larger structures. And the scaling law for this kind of assembly is one in which, well, let's see, that example showed four assembly steps putting together 16 pieces. Take that forward, and one finds that 30 steps put together a billion. Of course, the purpose isn't to put together little tiles, but to put together intricate three-dimensional objects, which might be made of superior materials, denser computational systems, putting blocks together to make larger blocks, which ultimately uh, can be assembled into more familiar macroscopic systems. Now, if that block, the cubic centimeter scale, were a system built with atomic precision, it could hold a billion processor cores, 10 billion gigabytes of information storage, far beyond anything that Moore's law of progress uh, promises. Building up with atomic precision from the bottom is a very powerful approach to improving technology. If you look around you, you'll see many artifacts. You'll see, you'll see people and we're well, not artifacts, but virtually everything else you see was made by machines or with the aid of machines. And those machines were made by machines or with the aid of machines. And tracing back the genealogy of machines, you'll find earlier and, and less automated and simpler machines. But if you go back far enough down the family tree of, of industrial technologies, you'll find someone doing this kind of work. Shaping materials in a direct way to make components and tools that could make better tools, more mechanized, more precise, that were used to make better and more complex tools, to make better and more complex products, and ultimately a very intricate technology base, making complex objects has required complex machinery. Now, we'd like to be able to make complex objects in the molecular world to start climbing a ladder of technologies like the one from Blacksmiths Forward, but it'd be very nice to not have to build very complex systems to make complex objects. And in fact, in recent macro-scale industrial pro progress, we've, we've seen a way of doing that. You have sim relatively simple machines do X, Y, Z motion of something with respect to a platform on which one is building something. And the something that is moved takes some action that results in a little bit of material being added. Sometimes it's using laser to, to sinter a bit, of, a bit of powdered metal. Other times it's a, a nozzle that's putting down little bits of, of melted plastic, the most common form of 3D printer or additive manufacturing system. So I've addressed high throughput, comes from scaling laws. 
atomic precision comes from starting with nature's atomically precise molecules and putting them together while not losing that precision. Atomic precision leads to new materials. Structure of matter is, is, can, is, can be controlled much more thoroughly. New materials leads to new components and to new systems. From this comes an unprecedented scope of production, the range of things that can be made, broader than what's found in industrial civilization, increases in scale of production, and reductions in cost. Billion-fold improvements in information technology, 10 to 100-fold improvements from better materials in aerospace, and even in mundane areas such as housing, lower cost, higher strength, higher efficiency, immunity to earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, production on a scale that could bring a very high standard of living to people around the world. Regarding the question of whether the singularity is near, uh, I think it's in one sense very hard to say. But what I think is clear and what I think is widely believed by people who are thinking, at, thinking about history and the development of technology with sufficient perspective is that on a historical time scale, we are very close to an unprecedented and enormous and swift transformation of human life and the world.